We're here for for Pixels for Studios to interview Christian Haynes from the project Zack in Time, an uh, animated feature about a character that basically can time travel, but um, without me going into detail about the project and everything about it that's actually really good, um, I'm going to hand over to Christian Haynes who will be able to tell you guys a little bit about himself, his role in the project, and what the project's about. Christian, over to you. Yeah, awesome. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Christian Haynes. I'm the writer, director, creator of Zack and Time. Um, I'm just a, a huge fan of animation. I've just always loved animation uh, ever since I could remember. And um, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to create my own kind of animated series. And uh, yeah, just one day um, uh, when I was at home school, I was just kind of working on uh, other people's projects here and there. And I wasn't really doing anything that was kind of like creative or inspiring on my part. Uh, so one of my one of my good friends just said like, hey, why don't you just create one of your own ideas? And uh, that's pretty much how Zach and Time was born. I just kind of grabbed a little notebook and started writing down different ideas like time travel, teenagers, um, secret agents and all this stuff. And uh, I couldn't really come up with an idea for uh, just one one topic so i kind of just mashed it all together so i was like what if the teenager you know became a secret agent and used time travel for all his different missions and uh, that's how the idea started created and um, i i had it as my my senior thesis project um my, my senior year at college um it was just kind of like a like a danny phantom style kind of teaser trailer and um i thought that that would kind of like you know launch my career afterwards i thought it would like you know pitched around and everything it didn't quite happen um, so I kind of put it on the shelf and I kind of just did a bunch of other just kind of odd jobs from the industry, like production assistant, um, driver, just stuff like that. Um, and then I just kind of came to the point where I'm just like, okay, now I'm not really doing what I really want to be doing. What I want to be doing is like working on Zach and time and animation and creativity and everything. So I kind of, uh, kind of dusted off the old notebook for Zach and time and really started developing as a series. And uh, I reached out to my friend, uh, Paige, Paige Powell Revis, who's uh, actually the producer on this project. Um, she was an animator on the original version of Zack and Time. And um, I just said, hey, remember that idea that we had for Zack and Time? Like, what if we actually, you know, took it seriously and had it as like an actual series? And she's like, yeah, definitely, because I've been really wanting to do like something serious with animation as well. So I really just kind of partnered together and just try to find, you know, just crew members, just animators, um, artists, uh, different producers here and there. And slowly but surely, we just started to kind of get our little animation crew together. And then once kind of the 2020 pandemic hit, every, the world kind of shut down. And that just gave us even more initiative to kind of work on it seriously. So ever since that point, we've just been working on it um, just constantly. Um, we have a, a couple of teaser trailers out. We're working on a, a new, brand new trailer right now for the series. We're also working on a pilot episode, an 11 minute pilot. And then um, just like different kind of uh, self-contained stories here and there. Um, but, but yeah, I guess to, to say what Zach and Time is, uh, uh, Zack and Time is the story of a 13-year-old boy named Zack. He finds a time-traveling watch um, after moving to a new town, um, and then he realizes that um, the watch actually tr helps him travel through time, and um, he actually gets recruited by a, a secret government agency, the SIA, or Secret Intelligence Agency, um, who actually created the watch, and he helps them on different time-traveling missions um, throughout the agency. So it's kind of like what the show is, kind of in a nutshell, it's sort of like Danny Phantom meets Kim Possible with a little bit of Ben 10 thrown in there. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the overview of what Zack and Time is and how I kind of got the idea for it and uh, where we're kind of at with the production of it. That sounds like quite a bit. Uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, one of the, the questions I, I'm thinking as I'm listening to you though, is how, how are you guys balancing having your, your jobs as well as working on Zach in time, because it's it's a lot. Yeah, definitely. Um, it definitely comes with uh, kind of prioritizing. Um, I'm glad that I'm just super glad that um, I'm able to kind of just kind of uh, kind of delegate different uh, tasks to people. So at first, when I was kind of developing the idea of, uh, on my own, it was really just me kind of just doing everything. And then uh, once Paige came in, I was able to really kind of delegate things like, okay, you do the storyboarding, you do the designs, you do the sound, you do the music. And once we kind of started building our crew a lot more, uh, we, we were able to kind of um, 
divide up the production a little bit more to make it easier for us so that people you know who do have day jobs or who go to school um, can kind of find that balance. And uh, right now we don't really have like hard deadlines, like we have to get this done by this month or this week. Um, we're just kind of, we understand that, like, you know, people have like their other, their lives in school and uh, other products that they're working on. Um, so we kind of try to have that like kind of like work-life balance kind of thing. Um, so pretty much any time like a, a volunteer can just, you know, volunteer their time. And if they have like a day or like a week or like a month to work on, whatever task or shot that we have for them, we're definitely grateful. Um, so that's kind of how we kind of balance it out. Um, it it kind of makes it a little bit hard because it kind of makes the production process a little bit longer, but you know, it really gives people an opportunity to really like learn like as they do it. So they don't really have to feel like rushed or, you know, stressed out about trying to get something done on time. They can have that balance. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I remember uh, uh, trying a project of my own. I think it was last year, the year before, yeah, the year before last. Um, and it was, it was quite difficult balancing it with the, my day job because um I also have a full-time day job in uh, Pixel Smith Studios at the moment. is It's a bit of a, a side venture for myself and and the two other guys who are involved at the moment, but it's it's been rewarding as well. And how you explain it here is how we also approach um, all of the things we're involved with. Like you you work on it as you can, but we we also and you guys are dedicated and. You actually put in the time when you have it and when you can you do a little bit more and that's how we also work things because we understand that that work-life balance is quite hard um with that then i would also ask so have you ever reached a point where everything you've been working on you just you just feel a bit burnt out and then if so how did you recover from that and then got over um, that initial stages and then found the the um, creative drive you found the energy in yourself again and you you're able to pick up your pencils you're able to just start over again from where you left off last and just go yeah definitely there's definitely been uh, ups and downs uh, with the production uh, that's for sure um, where there's like really high highs and really low lows and um, you know when when you're at that that high, um, you know you feel like the ideas never stop, and you know the, the work never stops, and you're like you're enjoying what you're doing. And then there's moments where there's just like just nothing, where it's just like, uh, is this product still being made? And you know you just you have those doubts in your in your mind, like, oh, did I make the right decision? Am I is this project going to be worthwhile? And then it, you know the pendulum kind of swings again, and you know you feel that creative energy again. Um, I think. I think probably two things that kind of helped me through the production is like one, my, my wife has definitely been a huge inspiration for me to kind of keep that motivation going um, and, you know, just keep the passion alive and, you know, just having that kind of that support team around you to kind of help you through uh, those lows where you just feel like, oh, what am I doing? Like, this is not working. Did I make the right decision um, to kind of help you through? And then the other thing is like, maybe just like, you know, it's, it's okay to take, take breaks um, from work. Um, you don't have to constantly be creating something um, in order to, you know, feel, feel fulfilled, you know, sometimes, you know, just like taking a walk outside or like reading a good book or watching a TV show or just hanging out with friends or something, um, just to kind of take your mind off the work a little bit, um, to just kind of like reset you in a way, um, just so that when you do come to the, to the point where you're like, okay, now I feel like calm, relaxed, I'm ready to work. I'm in a, definitely in a better mental space uh, to be creative. Um, that, that's been helpful as well. So I would say like those two things have been helping me through this uh, kind of crazy up and down roller coaster of uh, production the second time. That's actually pretty decent. Uh, I've got quite a supportive partner myself and I, I definitely agree. Having supportive people around you, friends, family, and that actually stand by you and help you during those times, it, it makes the world's difference. Um, I think I would have been a lot more burnt out by now if I didn't have a partner telling me you should take a break now or have you had enough water? <laughs> yeah. Uh, simple, something simple like that, actually, just uh, on the topic of water. I don't know if it's been your experience as well, but if I don't have enough water during the day, by nighttime, I'm tired significantly faster and I also feel my eyes are quite strained because, mm -hmm. but if I have enough water, then so 
taking care of your mental health as well as your physical health while on a creative endeavor is, is I would agree with you there as well. It's quite important. And, and I'm saying that like a statement, but um, listening to you now, that's, that's something I'm picking up that you're also saying is that taking care of yourself, both mentally and physically, it's, is important. Mm. Um, so I would, I would then also ask what, what would you say has been the, the biggest influences on Zach and Time's story uh, from your side? Like what helped you? Because you, you mentioned unplugging, going uh, for walks, going outside, stuff, uh, just creatively also recharging to take breaks. What inspired the story of Zach and Time for you? Like what was the moment where you realized this is what I want to make a story about. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. I've definitely been a huge fan of uh, Butch Hartman. Uh, Danny Phantom was like one of my favorite shows growing up. And uh, I just really wanted to kind of create a show that kind of emulated that uh, tone, uh, the characters and the tone, the storyline. And that's really kind of how it all kind of started. I really just kind of took the characters in a way and just kind of like put my own spin on it. And uh, kind of as the story was kind of going along, um, I kind of just put more of me into it, kind of more of my kind of experiences, uh, kind of growing up, my, my, my childhood, like my time when I was a 13 year old boy, um, kind of growing up into it. And then it kind of kind of developed from there. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I would say like a mixture of kind of grows, uh, grows <laughs> shows that I grew up uh, watching and um, uh, my own experiences uh, kind of growing up, kind of kind of mashed together. And then that's kind of where the story formed uh, from there. And then kind of as, as that developed, um, like movies like Back to the Future, um, the Terminator series, um, Spider-Man the Spider-Verse, uh, Lego movie, all these sort of like movies about like the, the hero's journey, like the ordinary person kind of plucked from their kind of boring life and then kind of thrown into this extraordinary world and kind of how they deal with that and how they grow and how that journey and how the events kind of shape them as a person. And then they become kind of the hero that they're meant to be. Um, th those were definitely uh, huge influences on me kind of as the story developed for Zach and Time. That's, that's actually pretty cool. I love that you mentioned the year of journey. Um, it's something I'm also quite familiar with and being involved with marketing for the last eight or nine years. It's something that the, even marketers use about the year's journey. Uh, and I like that you mentioned that uh, where if I'm going to ask, how, how did you come to learn of the, the hero's journey? Because a lot everyone has a different way of finding the hero's journey, same as with how the hero in the hero's journey always has different ways of finding their call to, their call to action or their call to adventure. Um, how did you come to, to learn of the journey? Yeah, I, uh, I had a, a class, um, the, the Art of Storytelling class at, at Biola my, my freshman year of college. And um, the, the first book that we uh, read was the, the Writer's Journey by uh, Christopher Vogler. And, um, and how he was inspired by um, uh, Joseph Campbell, um, the hero of the Thousand Faces. And then I, I've always heard about that because like I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I know like, George Lucas was inspired by Joseph Campbell and uh, the hero of the Thousand Faces. I um, actually, yeah, actually bought both books and I've read them um, uh, uh, once over. And yeah, they're really good. Every time I come up with like another story idea, I'm always looking at the little graph of like hero's journey, ordinary world, call to adventure, meet with the mentor, crossing the threshold. Like I always try to make sure I have those little steps every time I'm writing like an episode of Zach Time or like the, the, the web series version. I'm always kind of try to check in with the kind of uh, ancient uh, story structure uh, with that. So I've, uh, yeah, I've always uh, been familiar with that ever since I was, I think I was like, it was 18 when I did that. And I'm like 28 now. So yeah, about, about 10 years of being uh, involved in like the whole hero's journey and everything um, as far as like story structure for, um, for like Zach and time and other stories. That that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I only, I only learned of the hero's journey about two, two, three years ago. Um, and it was when we were doing at the job I had at that time, it was, a, we were busy with a, uh, a workshop about restructuring our marketing material. And we just got a new marketing manager in as well. And then he showed us uh, the hero's journey and how brands use the hero's journey to communicate to their customers um, and how they position themselves. And I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen this already, but being as familiar as you are with the hero's journey, you, you, you would likely have noticed this, but 
brands always place themselves in the position of the mentor. And then they put the customer or the client as the hero. So, so that, that, that whole um, setup was my introduction. And it, it was really cool once I, I figured. And then from there, I also bought the, the Hero with a Thousand Faces book. Um, I'm, about, I'm about five pages in. Uh, then, then we moved house. And the, the book is currently still, still packed away. I don't have a bookshelf uh, set up for it yet. So once my bookshelf is up, I'll pack the books out and then I'll continue reading this, the book. But it, it's, it's a really powerful book. Uh, just on page five already, uh, my mind was blown by how Joseph draws the, the comparisons. Mm. Um, but that... Sorry, I, I went on a tangent now because that, that that's that's something that I that's a topic that I'm, I enjoy quite a bit is how people can make links to things. Um, like I li- I love how you linked your your creative influences and made a story. Uh, when I saw the artwork for Zach and Time, my my initial thought was, "Hey, this looks a lot like Impossible and um, Fairly Odd Parents and Ad- Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy." all favorite shows of mine as well. And I, w- I was wondering, did you ever meet Steven Silver? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Uh, I would I would highly recommend you, um, you reach out to him and say hello and show him your work because um, he's the, the guy who worked on Kim Possible. Uh, I think he actually made Kim Possible. And mm-hmm. the, the style that Zach and Time is in is a style that he's also quite well, um, quite well used to with working in, and he has a academy where he teaches uh, people about drawing, shape, languages, and all that stuff. And he uses his drawing style to teach. So a lot of his students will have a lot of influences from how he works. Um, uh, definitely do reach out to him, show him your work, tell him your story. I am sure that he would love to. To, to start, basically just see it and go, hey, this is really good. Um, he, he's always supportive of artists and what from what I've seen him post online. But apart from that, uh, has there been... Sorry, we, we went on a whole tangent now. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's all good. Yeah, I love Curious Journey and everything. I'm like a huge story nerd. I'm, like, I'm always reading like books on screenwriting and storytelling. So yeah, yeah. this is like <laughs> this is like good for me. Yeah. Um, so on that, then there are two books that I need to send to you. The the titles of uh, the one is both about video editing, uh, believe it or not. But uh, I've I've learned that in the creative world, everything is linked. I the, um, I I had a, a art lead about five years, four or five years ago, at a diff- when I was working digital agency in advertising industry. And he uh, asked me to, if I want to get better, what do I think I should do? And we had a discussion and he said to me, draw, start drawing. Once you draw, it will make everything else get better. And it did uh, because you, in drawing, you learn all the fundamentals like shapes, volumes, lighting, and all those things. And then that actually did make all of my design and video work much better. Uh, but that was then. And since then, I've grown significantly and I still draw till this day. So, so yeah, um, the, the one is the, in the blink of an eye or something like that. And then the other one is the eye is quicker, but it's, it's, even though it's about video editing, um, I think there will be quite a few takeaways that you, that will most likely reaffirm what you have already read or seen. And they might, they will definitely be one or two different views that, you're like, hey, this is this is quite a good way of looking at it. So, I'll I'll be sure to send you those two titles as well. Um, so then, my next question is: Have you ever had a, a moment where you're busy working on Zach and Time, and you just everything was just going well, and you figured, hey, I would really love to do this. I think this is the right space for me to be right now. And I would like to do this a lot more full time or a bit more as part of my career before moving on to a new project. Yeah, I think uh, I think 
pretty much since I've always, since I first came up with the, the idea of Zach and Tom, I've like always wanted to just pursue it as, you know, the thing I want to be working on pretty much like, pretty much yeah, for the rest of my life, but, you know, as my career. Um, and like, I've always had like other ideas, you know, other like movie ideas or like TV show ideas or like you know, book ideas. But and there's just something about Zach and Tom that's like always, you know, just stuck with me. Um, I guess probably because it's just, it's the most personal story I've come up with. And like every other story that, you know, I try to have like another like personal spin on it. Um, it just hasn't really compared to Zach and Tom. Like every time I think about it, I can always just think of like 15, 20 different ideas of like, oh, this Zach can go here. The, the agency can go here. And like, I'm always like coming up with ideas like kind of world building. And uh, like other people can like, ask me like, like how come, what, what is it about this idea that like you always keep coming back to? Like, I know you have like, thousands of other ideas like what is it about Zach and time like I, I, don't, I don't know I think just from the moment I came up with it, like really, pretty much like lightning struck in a way and you know I just can't stop <laughs> thinking about it and mm -hmm. you know if, if it ever you know does become a series then you know I definitely would love to work on it for like five four five six years um if, if you know that ever happens um and you know if I have other ideas that come after that um that that would be awesome too but yeah I, don't, I, I can't really explain it but yeah it's just like the second time, like, it just feels like, yeah, this, this is the show I really want to be working on. And, um, yeah, I can, you know, spend forever the rest of my life working on it and, uh, enjoy doing it. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to phrase my next question more like a statement. Um, and I would love for you to weigh in on this. Uh, it sounds the way you're describing it, it, it sounds like, um, it more like the, you spent quite a bit of time on this already. You, you found your passion for it. Um, you know that this is something that really sits with you. You you love the story. You love the characters. You love the events that shape the characters. So I would say you've become emotionally attached to the uh, to the IP, um, and you've poured so much of your yourself into the IP that. It, it just feels like a part of you now. And that's why you keep working on it. Mm. So, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's actually really cool because um, <laughs> I've, I've never been able to really stick with a project myself. So I, I really admire that about you. It's like that you've been able to build this up and you said, you mentioned that you've been working on it for, for the last couple of, not just the last couple of months or years, but you've been working on it for, you, you're 28 now, and you started when you were 18, 19. So it's about 10 years. It's almost an, I think it's called an era. 10 years is an era, right? So <laughs> it's been a long time that you've been working on this, and you've been releasing some high-quality visuals. It's, it's rare, actually, where people have the, where I've noticed, where people have the drive to actually go and, put themselves out there like you have and actually push through. Um, I really admire that. So uh, with, with that, then I would ask, has there been, what would you say or who has been your biggest influences on your story telling on your, your art influences who are artists that you, you have looked up to or still look up to, to uh, draw from towards working on your stuff. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I already mentioned uh, Butch Hartman a bunch of times, but but yeah, he's still uh, an influence for me for sure. Um, but but other than him, um, definitely like Phil Lord and Chris Miller, uh, the directors of a uh, Lego Movie and you know the uh, Spider Man to the Spider Verse. I just love all their stuff they do. Like as far as like storytelling, um, like how they stick with. Obviously, they stick with the hero's journey, but they put like their whole like different spin on it. You know, they have like comedy and drama and like action to to all their all their films, and yeah, mm. they just like every time they release a new movie, it's just like like lightning in a bottle right there. Um, another influence, um, probably uh, like Michael Dante Di Martino and uh, Brian Knixco, the uh, creators of Avatar: Last Airbender and uh, Legend of Korra. Um, just as far as like epic storytelling. Um, cause they were like on Nickelodeon, it was, you know, just kind of like SpongeBob and, you know, fairly odd parents and cat dog and all these things. And like, they just come on, come in with after our last airbender. It's like, wait, whoa, these like 22 minute episodes. And there's like a, you know, a three season arc and there's like a continuous serialized storyline. 
where like the main character has to learn all these different elements to you know defeat the the main villain at the very end like this this doesn't happen in Nickelodeon so they kind of literally just like broke the boundaries with with that show um and then probably uh probably Dan Pottenmeyer and um Swan Jeff Swappy Marsh the uh, creators of Phineas and Ferb um the way they really kind of just like subverted like what a, a kid's tv show could be um with, with everything they do with, with those characters and like how every episode seems like the same and repetitive but they're really like different uh, if you really think about it um but yeah those those would probably be the the ones that really influenced me um to kind of just like think beyond like the kind of box that you know people think typical animation can be like kind of break the boundaries you know tell different stories um you know kind of like shake up the the, the typical uh, story formula that you find in these kind of animated projects but but yeah, those would probably be the, the biggest influences for me, for sure. Oh, that is, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so then, now that we, we know who's been, which artists have been influencing you, we've, we've established all the, the themes you pull from. We've, we've spoken quite a bit about you. Um, and we've mentioned your IP, Zach, in time, but what it's about, who it's about, stuff. But tell us a bit about Zach. Um, tell us, a, who is he? Where is he? And how does he, how, how did he come about? Yeah, for sure. He, so he's the child of a, a divorced couple. Um, his, his mom, uh, her name is Jennifer, Jennifer McAllister and his father, his name is Marcus Shaw. Um, they, they're, they're an interracial couple. Um, his father's black and his mom's white. Um, so that obviously kind of created like some, some tension uh, here and there just between their their different families they loved each other but their families kind of were just like oh, i don't know about this and everything um but yeah they just kind of ignored it but then you know they came together got married and they had zach um but the the problem was marcus his father was kind of more kind of influenced by his like potential you know, music career he's like a musician um you know something like a jazz band and everything and he really kind of wanted to kind of pursue more of his career rather than focus on his family um, so he ended up kind of leaving his family behind, leaving um, Zach and his mom behind. Um, so Zach kind of just grew up, you know, in a single single parent home, um, didn't really know too much about his father, just kind of very just like glimpses here and there, just like little memories uh, here and there. But his mom would never really talk about him. So he always kind of had this kind of missing piece in his life. Like he's always like looking for something kind of beyond his circumstances. And um, because of uh, his father leaving, they They've been kind of bouncing around from place to place, like moving from place to place. And uh, where the story uh, starts with Zach and Time is uh, uh, Zach and his mom moving to uh, Cheyenne, uh, Wyoming. And um, so Zach doesn't know anybody there. He's starting school like about uh, in the eighth grade when everyone else has probably known each other since sixth or seventh grade already. So he's the new kid. He's also biracial, half black, half white. So he doesn't really know which group to hang out with. He's kind of walking down the hall like, OK, do I hang out with white kids? Do I hang out with black kids? Like. Where do I fit in? And then you know, some, one day he kind of stumbles across the, the time traveling watch and he doesn't know it's a time traveling watch. He just thinks it's like, you know, this cool looking watch, you know, takes it back home, puts it on his wrist. It like uh, uh, latches onto it. And then suddenly he's transferred into like American Revolution to, you know, Great Wall of China to ancient Aztec times, you know, all these different places. And he's like, whoa, what, what the heck is going on? And then as the story goes on, um, he realizes that it was actually created by the secret government agency. And there's this whole break in by the villains who try to steal the watch and they kind of lost it in the car chase uh, afterwards. And he kind of gets wrapped up in this kind of new adventure with these secret agents. So not only is he kind of like the new kid in the school that he has like no idea how to really navigate, but now he's also kind of the centerpiece within this agency. And now he has to kind of fit in with, within the, the, the agency world. So it's kind of like these balance between two worlds where he's trying to fit in with you know his classmates and you know his friends at, at school and but and also just trying to you know deal with like everyday missions and you know just kind of be this kind of time traveler uh throughout you know throughout history through all these different missions so it's really kind of like a coming of age story and then also kind of kind of growing up realizing who your identity is and what your you know what your place is in the world and that's kind of the theme of Zach and Time is uh, identity is if I can kind of boil all of Zach and Time into one word to be identity like finding out who you are, you know, where you belong, what's your purpose, you know, who do you associate yourself with, you know, how much do you let other people influence who you are and how much do you kind of influence yourself and how much does your identity come from yourself rather than other people's opinions. Um, so that's really who Zach is, you know, this series really is kind of his 
maturing into kind of figuring out who he is, what he wants, what he's after, um, and then really kind of just becoming the person you know he you know wants to be and who he's capable of being. And that's really what I kind of want to inspire you know kids and you know all audiences of this show is that you know no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, you, know, you can find a group of people that you belong with, and you can find you know a way to you know be proud of who you are in a way and not let you know the outside world kind of tell you who you are. But really, you know, you can figure that out, you know, for yourself and you're capable of that. So, yeah, it's kind of the all of Zach and time kind of in a nutshell, really. Yeah, uh, I think when I have kids, this is definitely the kind of story I, I would love to show them. Like, because it, the the um, backstory to Zach that you explained, uh, it hits quite close to home for myself as well. And the, the themes that you mentioned, it's it's all themes, I think, that are very important for kids to to be exposed to quite early on growing up, um, that they have to learn to find themselves regardless of where you come from. Um, and also you mentioned the, the black and white families that there's tensions, and but the mom and dad were still able to fall in love. And I think that's also important. Kids need to know that you can do that. You can, be, you can fall in love with other people. You don't have to fall in love with someone that just your mom and dad wants you to fall in love with. You can have a life um like you, you mentioned his father wanted to be a musician and uh the family sadly separated um from there yes that happens there's a lot of families in in the world today that don't stay together so these are all themes that deal with real life issues well not issues i would say real life moments that we have that's quite common. And I, I think it's really good that your show incorporates all of that into your character. Um, then from there, I would ask, who is the, the villain? Because we now we know who's Zach, but who's the villain? Who's the, the guy that he always thwarts, the plans that he always foils? How, who, who, how does that fit in and who, who do we see playing along that story? Yeah, yeah the, the main villain, his name's uh, James Hale. Um, he's a he's a very interesting character because he's a very like sympathetic villain in a way. Um, the his whole backstory is that uh, he and uh, Beckett, the main kind of mentor character in Zack and Time, um, they were best friends. They were <clears throat> they were both recruited by excuse me by a uh, director North who um, kind of started the SIA in order to kind of kind of pull off missions that you know the normal government kind of wouldn't really be too kind of too scared of or you know would be you know kind of slow in acting towards so he she was just kind of recruit a bunch of different like scientists and engineers to kind of come up with a tool to kind of you know help them in different missions and um after she hired Beckett and Hale um she kind of paired the two up together to kind of come up with this new idea and as they collaborated they came up with the idea for the time traveling watch and you know they were they were working on it for like months and months and months and you know Hale was kind of more in for it, for kind of just, you know, the, the discovery of science, you know, just like finding like the new kind of new, the new thing uh, to kind of work on. And uh, Beckett was kind of more towards like, kind of steering more towards kind of the glory of it all. Like, oh, once we show this idea to the agency, like we're gonna be promoted to head agent and everything. And that's where they kind of have that tension uh, in a little bit. Um, so uh, one day uh, Beckett actually took the idea for the time traveling watch as his own he presented it to, to, to North as if it was as, as if it were his own idea, and um, North actually promoted uh, Beckett to the head science uh, of the head science division, and you know he was able to kind of run that whole kind of branch of the SIA. And then uh, Hale, on the other hand, he felt very betrayed. He felt you know like his back was turned on, um, like he was he, he was very hurt. So he ended up leaving the, the SIA and um, kind of plotting his revenge on Beckett and on the SAA for kind of stealing his their collective idea and kind of taking it as his own. Um, so we kind of cut to 20 years later where that the start of the, of, uh, the series, uh, Beckett is actually um, working on the time traveling watch and kind of uh, finally uh, finishing, finishes construction on like a prototype of the watch that's kind of ready for use. Uh, and then Hale's trusted henchman, William Pierce, breaks into the SAA, steals the watch and in a uh, ensuing car chase, um, they actually lose the watch and um, they kind of have to like, you know, reassess their plans after that. And then kind of after um, 
they figure out where the watch is. They find out that Zach has a watch and it becomes this whole kind of like Terminator thing of like, you know, Terminator slash uh, Sarah Connor and John Connor, like trying to get the watch back on these two different sides. Um, so that's pretty much who, who James Hale is, kind of like the, the empathetic villain um, who, you know, felt very betrayed um, by, by, by Beckett um, for taking the watch as his own. And then, you know, now he's swearing revenge to get the watch back as his own or find his own or make, construct his own time traveling watch to uh, have revenge on the agency. So that's kind of where the conflict comes throughout the series. That's pretty cool. Uh, you're touching on the theme there that's also uh, really good is the, um, the villain feeling betrayed, but he wasn't really. So, um, but also uh, with villains, I've noticed that there are very few villains who are inherently just evil. Every villain has a reason for being the way they are. Um, so that, that's also pretty cool. I, li I like the, the balance that you have there between between the villain and his story and you have Zach and his story. So it's, it's two quite people who are quite different. Um, so then who are the, the sidekicks to Zach? Like who are the people that he, he relies on, goes on missions with, or goes when you, when, you, when he's not, maybe when he's not on a mission, it's his friends or stuff like that. So who are the supporting characters to Zach? Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he has uh, two best friends, uh, Kendall Campbell and uh, Angela Wong. Uh, Kendall is kind of like the kinda like the typical kind of like nerdy kid. Um, you know, he loves like science fiction and fantasy. So when he hears about the agency after Zach tells him his secret, he's like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. You know, we're going to go on different missions and all this stuff. And he's like geeking out and whatnot. Yeah, he's definitely kind of like uh, Ned from uh, the um, Spider-Man Homecoming films. Um, kind of like the, the geeky friend who's like always stoked about the adventure. And then on the other hand, you have uh, Angela Wong, uh, who's actually kind of Zach's secret crush in a way, but also his, his one of his close friends. Um, she's kind of like the moral compass of the group, kind of like the Hermione Granger to these two boys, uh, crazy antics and everything. She's always kind of coming up with like the, um, she's kind of the conscious of the group, always has the right thing to say that the boys are kind of like rolling their eyes at like, okay, Angela, all this stuff. But the three of them like really work together and um, they're always going on different missions together, uh, whether it be to like ancient Rome to like do research on like a history report or like uh, traveling to like a, um, like a art museum to stop James Hale and his uh, henchmen from stealing a, you know, like a famous uh, gold statue or something. Um, but yeah, the three of them are, are kind of like the primary characters that will be going on the missions uh, throughout the series. And the two of them really kind of help support Zach um, just so he doesn't have to go out of it alone um, and really kind of be like, there his uh moral his moral backup as well as his like actual backup with like you know combat and uh all these things with the missions and everything hmm. yeah that's that's pretty cool i, I like that um uh, I, I think i'll go i'll go back and and watch uh watch a bit more into the links you sent me um i did look through them and i did i did have a get a good idea of of what it's about of what uh, zach and Dan's about but I, I really also just wanted to ask you to put your your, your explanation on it for this uh, interview because who better to tell us what we're what we're watching or what we're going to be watching than than you guys yourselves? Um, so then I would ask, what are some of your, of course, what you are allowed to tell us? What are some of your ideas? that you really wanted to want to or wanted to bring into Zach and time, but it's not there yet. So what are some of the, the themes without going, I would say without going into story, without spoiling what, what you want to put into Zach and time actual events, but more like what are some of the themes or some of the, the, the messages that or arcs that you want to put into Zach and time still that you feel will really make the show run for, for significantly longer. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I really would love like the show to kind of start off as kind of like, you know, like fun episodic episodes and then kind of mature as the character has gone on, kind of like the whole kind of Harry Potter model of like the first ones, you know, very like kid friendly and everything. And by the time you get to the seventh one, it's like super dark, mature and everything. And not that I want Zach and Time to be super dark, but I really want to kind of grow as the characters grow and kind of become like you know a little bit more mature you know have them face like kind of kind of uh tougher themes and everything and kind of really just kind of get into that um like one of the main themes i really want to get into is kind of like the the whole kind of double life uh kind of conflict 
of like, you know, the character kind of switching between his normal world and um, the agency world and how those, those two worlds really don't mix and, you know, how there's going to be conflict um, between those two worlds. Like, you know, instead of studying for a test, he's like on this different mission or instead of, you know, preparing, you know, with this combat training, he's, you know, stuck in detention and, you know, the, this kind of whole like conflict between these two worlds. I really would love to get more into that theme um, uh, as the series series goes on um, and kind of like the choices that he, that Zach has to make, uh, the sacrifices that he'll have to make both with his normal world and the agency world uh, in order to kind of find this balance, uh, this uh, supposed balance that he, he would he would love to have. Um, so that's, that's one of the themes. And then I would really love to get into like kind of like um, uh, familial themes, like more about Zach's family and more of Zach's past and his history, um, just like just who he is as a person um, and how his past kind of influences his present and therefore kind of, you know, predicts his future in a way. Um, I'd really love to get into that. Um, and yeah, just more of just like, more just like time travel stuff, more like uh, uh, mission uh, stuff. Um, yeah, just more just kind of uh, uh, like, I, I keep trying to avoid the word darker because I, I don't want to be like, you know, dark or scary or anything, but just like more, uh, I guess, mature, uh, more serious uh, uh, topics that, that I love these characters to, to confront as the series goes on. Uh, I would I would say uh, to that though, well, first I've got a very, myself, I've got a very dark sense of humor. So when, when, when you say darker uh, and you uh, associate it with mature, I, I immediately realized that that's what you meant. Because um, growing up, uh, for, for me, life has been interesting very very educational um but also as i matured i realized when you're and you you saying darker it's like that's actually how it is because the the tougher decisions we make that shape us and the life lessons we learn especially the hardest ones we learn it from experiences that we would rather not repeat mm -hmm. and that's also something i, I associate with dark humor it's like you don't want to be there but you learn to you learn to live with the the lessons you've picked up. Uh, in most cases, also the trauma, and you learn to deal with that trauma. So mm -hmm. I think that you incorporating that into Zach and Time is a really good um, component. Which means I would actually love to watch the show as well. It's not just going to be for kids. It's introducing that element for me, for me. I would say you're making a show that's basically for all ages. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just starting out as uh, it's not just a kid show it's it's an all ages show but it has lessons for kids and it has moments for adults to connect to and relate to that from their past experiences so i quite like that um and then then yeah uh so then from from that when when you set up now we've we've established that we've established the villain we know who's the the sidekicks to the two sides um how how would you how did you find your inspiration for your your story settings like because i mean we have the characters we have the story but now the settings you like the backgrounds the the um episode themes like for example art museum that they go to or you mentioned the aztecs or the ancient times um how did how do you go about deciding, okay, this is what I want this episode to play out in, or this is the, the, the timeline that I want this episode to be in. Is it like something from that timeline that connects to the story of, of that episode, or is it a bit at random? Um, how do you choose the, the stage, essentially? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it can be like a bit of both. Um, I'm a huge history nerd, so um having a, a time traveling story was definitely enjoyable for me um and just like reading through history of like oh it kind of in the back of my mind like oh that'd be kind of cool if like zach popped in at that moment or something like that um so there's there's like that that uh aspect of it and then there's the other aspect of it um which kind of comes from the story kind of come from character like i would kind of read through like the original uh, kind of feature length script that we're kind of working on and then kind of uh kind of pick and choose like Oh, how about we like draw in that moment a little bit more? Like, um, okay, Zach has a crush on Angela. Like, how how can I make a story out of that? 
um, like, okay, how about he, it's kind of like a Groundhog Day kind of episode where like he tries to ask Angela out on it to the school dance and, you know, he keeps failing. So he keeps having to go back in time and like redo uh, his, uh, his asking out. Cause you know, like one, one time he like tripped and fell and like, you know, he humiliated himself or like he couldn't get the words out. So he has to go back in time and like start it again. So sometimes it just comes from character where this, where the storylines can go or like just a funny idea that I would like to kind of develop into a whole episode. So it kind of, it kind of comes uh, um, either way, like either it'll just be like a random idea that it's just like, Hey, I think it'd be fun to do this. Or like it really become like, uh, it'd come out of like character where like, okay, you know, Zach has trouble with the bully. So maybe he goes back in time to, you know, the gladiator times and like he learns different skills to fight off his enemies and stuff like that. So yeah, it kind of comes like with uh, two, two different ways, either, randomness or a, a, a character base. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, you, you mentioned your history in it. What, what is your, your, this is now completely disconnected from the, the story and stuff. It's, it's more for interest for my, for my curiosity, but what's your favorite era in history and place? So if you could visit I wouldn't say live because the, the standard of living we know today and our historical status of living is <laughs> so significantly different. But if you could be a first person observer, like you could travel back in time and no one there could see you, you know, like how they have those memories where you observe a memory, no one can see or hear you, but you can see and hear everything. Which era and place would you like to visit? Oh man, <laughs> that's such a big question. Um, I think probably maybe like as far as like recent history, like I really love like the 60s. Um, uh, I love like, you know, like James Bond and, you know, uh, the Beatles and, you know, all, all that. And, uh, you know, the space race, uh, you know, the man, the moon landing, everything. Um, like I would love to be kind of around just maybe like a, a, an observer during that time. Because I feel like the 60s were such a revolutionary time, you know, obviously the civil rights movement and you know, all these other things, it would just be, you know, I have a dream speech, it'd just be nice to kind of be a, like a observer just watching, you know, the society kind of change uh, as as time was going on. Um, as, as far as like ancient history, um, going to like the Roman Colosseum and seeing like a gladiator fight would be awesome. Um, there's definitely a lot of like Roman gladiator influence in Zach and Time um, as the story goes on, um, just because like, I love that, that era, like gladiator is one of my favorite movies. So Going going back to that time would be really cool, um, but but yeah, those would probably be like the the, the times that I would really love to see um, just play out um, throughout history. Hmm. Yeah, I'm quite similar about the, the ancient era where I'd like to visit. Uh, for me, I'd love to visit Tenochtitlan uh, with the Aztecs. I would love to go see what that was really like, um, and then also ancient Egypt with. Mm during the era of Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. So ancient history, that, that's more or less where I'd like to go visit. But also um, I'd like to visit all the space, all the places where mythology from today and mythological beasts from today were born. Like how did this beast come into existence from XYZ's um, explanation? Like, like for example, a chimera. Like, what what did they see that made them describe the creature they saw? Because I know there's people when we can't describe something, we try and rationalize it and we try and put things together to explain it. And then so that's how we get a lot of the explanations from the past that we're like, okay, so this beast is that, or like the cyclops. And so I would I would really love to to go back and see where the mythological beasts and stories that we know today were born. But again, yeah. It's, it would be cool to time travel um, and observe. Yeah. I wouldn't want to change the past. Uh, there are yes, a few same. things that I would. <laughs> there are a few things that I would love to. If I change this, what would I do? How would I affect the timeline? Um, but with that being said, not wanting to change the past, I really, and this is just from me personally. I really hope that as people, we can get over all of the the things and become a better race for each other as well as for the planet but also to love more <laughs> like I, I really i really wish that would would happen and i really wish that people can just grow up <laughs> like for, for lack of better description yeah. i really wish that that could happen um i would love to see a world where 
where a lot of worldwide issues we have today isn't the issue in the future anymore, where we can actually go outside and we can hug our neighbor or and stuff like that. But yeah, that's just me. And that's also some of the things I was that was going through my head while you were talking about your influences for Zach and time and things we have going on today. And I was like, yeah, I, I would love for that to be a different story. But that's just me. Uh, so then with that also, I would say, who in your life would you give a big shout out to for have for where you are now worth that in time and also your career? Um, are there any, any people that you would love to give a big shout out to? Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely a huge shout out to, to Paige Powell Revis, my uh, producer. Uh, without her, pretty much any version of Zach in Time like wouldn't even exist. Uh, the, the original version uh, that, that we did back in college, she pretty much animated like half the shots on that one. And then with this new version, she pretty much assembled the entire crew. Like I, I had a hand in um, selecting a, a few people here and there, for, but a majority of the crew was actually all kind of handpicked from her. And uh, yeah, definitely, I, I definitely <laughs> am indebted to to her for sure for uh, just everything that's that's gone on uh, with with Zach and Time and just the success that has brought um, and you know the, the the people that we're able to connect with through the project uh, and everything with it. Um, definitely a huge shout out to her for sure. Um, and yeah, just like just the amazing crew that we've been able to work on, uh, whether they worked on it for like a month, for a year, you know, a day. Um, there, there's too many, way too many people to count, but but yeah, the, everyone who's worked on the crew uh, has been amazing so far. Just bringing this little idea that I've had back in 2014 uh, to life, and I'm, I'm definitely thankful for them. And uh, oh yeah, huge shout out to uh, to Brian Hull, uh, our voice actor who actually voices uh, James Hale, the main villain, uh, as well as two other characters in the in the show. Um, uh, without him, like we wouldn't have even gotten you know half the numbers we have on our social media, uh, just because he's a huge a voice actor and everything and you know just having his name on the project has definitely skyrocketed our, our numbers for for sure and um i guess yeah one more shout out would be uh tyler Rydos and uh chris lee who um had who created our, our theme song um tyler uh wrote the lyrics and composed the score and then chris did uh the vocals and uh, that's definitely brought a lot of like credibility to to the project as well as soon as people hear the theme song like, oh my gosh it's like danny phantom or kim possible and everything it's like like legitimate um so they, they really brought uh, a huge number to, to that and we use that song in all of our marketing for every like teaser trailer or for like every promo that we do um so we have yeah, we, we definitely have a huge shout out to them um but yeah those those would be like the ones um would really kind of help uh, as far as like the crew and everything and then emotionally obviously my, my i have to give a shout out to my wife um just helping me emotionally through this whole process and everything this whole production um, through all the ups and downs, um, through the the high hopes and like the <laughs> the, the low valleys and everything, um, I definitely huge uh, inspired by her, um, uh, just helping me through this time. Um, but yeah, those would probably be the, the biggest influences um, mm -hmm. and inspirations throughout this whole production for sure. You know, that's that, that's that's a, quite a few few names and stuff. Um, I would I would love to ask that you for the for the specific individuals you mentioned. Like like Paige, your your voice actor, your music composer. If you can send me their links as well, so that when I upload the YouTube video of our interview now, I can include a link to them as well in the description, um, just so that we can get there, give them a little bit of more recognition as well in the for this interview. Because I wouldn't have known about you if it wasn't for the the people who reached out to me, and that actually got me wondering, like, how did you guys find us? Yeah, that was all. Um, it's like partly, partly Paige and then partly uh, Jose, our uh, production assistant. Um, we were just kind of like scouring uh, just different, um, just like independent like animation uh, people who do just independent animation or like talk about animation. Um, and we were just like going through like YouTube and like podcasts and everything. And uh, yeah, we we found we found you that way and uh, a couple other people as well. And um, yeah, we just we just love to make connections with other people because you know just it's just hard to find like really like good just animation connections out there. Just you know, I live in the Central Valley and like no one really cares about animation except for like okay, oh that thing on Disney Plus, yeah, yeah, I watched that, but no one's really like in animation. So yeah, like, we yeah. just kind of 
going through YouTube and like podcasts and like the internet is like, and, and LinkedIn as well. Uh, just trying to find community and everything. Uh, we were able to just like find different people and yeah, find you and we were able to reach out to you. And you know, we're so grateful that, that you took the time to kind of interview us and, and respond to our emails and uh, interview us and everything. Um, and just kind of build our community and uh, in, in turn, like, yeah, help help you out too. Um, we, so we definitely love to like promote you for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just nice to kind of find other animation fans and animation enthusiasts out there and, you know, see that other people are excited about this medium and the storytelling and just talking about it. Um, it's just, it's just a, an amazing thing for sure. Yeah. Well, we were super excited when, when you got your team reached out to us and it was like, someone, who's making something is actually reaching out to us. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like we, 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 we're super excited. Um, also, that, that's why um, I, I felt so bad when, when you guys messaged, I was busy working at my day job on a very tight deadline. So um, I was in between the, the, the just about going to bed stages, like just finished work, just had a good evening. Uh, of just relaxing and breathing a bit before making supper and stuff. Then I check my emails and I respond. And then I remember messaging you after you connected with me on LinkedIn, because technology then just wasn't on my side either. And my um, uh, I'll, I'll check with the guys who sort out the the emails. But my my web webmail client isn't logging in. It keeps logging me out and gives me errors. So I was happy when you invited me on LinkedIn. I was like, yes, now I can tell this guy that why I haven't been able to get back to him yet. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really been great. Um, thank you for reaching out to us. And we love that we're able to feature you guys as well. For us at Pixel Smith Studios, the main goal of our features and our interviews is to get eyes on the work out there and the artists, because we, we love helping getting artists and their work noticed and seen. So for us, this is this is huge. And especially because you've been working on this project for so long, it's a big project. And there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that's gone into it and a lot of commitment. And we love to talk about things like that because it's it's a passion of ours to see people create what they want to create and do things that they love to do. So thank you for that and for giving us the opportunity to actually talk about this project of yours. Um, it's It's been really cool. Uh, we've been on for about an hour now, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna end it off with a little bit of an outro, and then um, ask you like a, a question or two if you have any other last thoughts or messages like that. If that's all right, yeah, okay. sounds good. Cool. So, Christian, thanks. It's been awesome having you guys with us. Um, it's been great hearing about Zach and Time and about you as an artist working on the production. Um, if if there's any do you, or let me ask this way, do you have any uh, thoughts or words of wisdom for anyone who would like to follow your example and start a project of their own and action, and then develop it and build it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> to, to steal from Nike, just do it. <laughs> um, and I know it can be very overwhelming to kind of like uh, come up with an entire TV show, an entire universe. And, you know, that's, it definitely can be, but you know, when I first came up with Zach in time, I wasn't thinking about this whole entire universe or anything. I was just thinking, okay, who's Zach? What, is, what does he want? You know, how does he get this watch? How does it help him out? And I would just kind of write down different like questions here and there, or I just write a log line, like, you know, Zach comes from such and such place and that influences him on in, in this aspect. And I would just kind of like start with just do baby steps from there. Um, you know, I just, you know, spent like maybe half an hour you know, each day, you know, you know, for the next couple of months, just like writing down like, okay, who's this character? Who's, who's his mentor? Who's his villain? You know, stuff like that. Um, and then that's kind of where it kind of expanded out from there. Um, so I, yeah, I would say if you have an idea for a TV show, you know, just, just go ahead and just, just go for it. Write down different ideas that you love, different stories that you love, characters that you love, and then just try to form a story out of that. Um, and then I guess the other thing I would say, you know, just put yourself into it you know, be as specific as possible, you know, draw from your own experiences, draw from your friends' lives, your family's lives, you know, your, your teacher's lives, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then you just try to be like as, as specific about details as possible. Um, you know, cause just, I, I think uh, it was like, uh, 
Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls, is like, yeah, the more specific it'll be, like the more original it'll will come off as. Because um, if you're just copying what other people do, people are just like, oh, I've seen that before. But if you draw from your own experience, like when I was eight years old, I ate a bug and I threw up in the middle of class. I'm going to write that in the story, <laughs> you know, just some random thing like that. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it would just be more, you know, original that way. So, uh, yeah, I would just say, just go ahead and do it. And then, you know, just have, you know, just, you know, just a couple of trusted people around you, you know, people who love animation, love storytelling, you know, people who will give you honest feedback on, you know, what, how your storyline is going and, you know, how your drawing style is going, um, stuff like that, you know, and if you really trust them, you know, invite them on to your project, invite them on to collaborate with you, because who knows, they might know someone who knows someone else who can kind of take you on to the next step or something like that. Um, so I, I would say that. And then I guess the last thing would be, you know, if you have social media, put your stuff on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever social media platform, TikTok, whatever you have, um, because, you know, that will help you grow as well. Um, you know, you'll get honest feedback. Well, you know, you also get haters, of course, but, you know, just <laughs> just say goodbye to the haters. Um, but, but if you, you, you know, you'll get honest feedback from people who genuinely, genuinely like love your stuff or enjoy your stuff. And, you know, that'll help you grow. Uh, in that way so yeah i would just say if you have an idea for a show just start with baby steps and then just kind of work your way up from there and you know who, who knows where you where you'll go from from there but uh but yeah the future will definitely be bright if you just kind of just take that first step hmm. okay thanks for that well christian it's been amazing um i'm looking forward to putting this video up on youtube uh, i'm probably going to be editing this our interview now towards this evening my time which will I think you're going to be asleep by the time I edit it, but um, I'll let you know once it's live and then I'll send it to you. And then, yeah, thank you again for, for having us um, from our side. Actually, thank you. Cause for us, this is, this is really cool. We, we love this kind of content. And then I would say, have a good evening further. Cause it's now nighttime there by you. Right. Yeah. That's probably yeah. It's morning for you there. Right. Yeah, my day is about to start. My I'm about to clock into my day job in about an hour's time or so. I'm I'm gonna have, I'm gonna now start my morning. <laughs> it's seven thirty a.m. in this night. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Christian. Have a good one, and then Thanks. we'll we'll stay in touch. Yeah, definitely. We'll do.